Un soldo. <ride> so. <ride> ok. Um, before we uh, talk about the uh, sadhana, uh, one must understand that the, our Lakshitra itself, how it came about. I mean, it's a very sh simple, short uh, story behind that is that uh, uh, our Buddha Shakyamuni, when he was uh, preaching uh, uh, to the public, and uh, one day he was very happy and he was very smiling a lot. He was uh, more than usually he was uh, smiling. And one of his disciples, uh, Kungavo, one of the best disciples, and he asked Buddha, then why uh, is, is he smiling uh, this way today? And then the Buddha said, uh, Buddha began to teach about uh, our Lokshitara. At the same time, a light rays issues out from Buddha's heart. It goes to the paradise and where, where the Amitabha uh, resides and Ami, it touches the Amitabha and then through Amitabha's heart, uh, the our Lokshitra came out. So that's one of the reason why our, our Lokshitra always have uh, Amitabha's uh, on, on, his, on, the, on the crown. So that's one of the reasons. Of course, uh, our Lakshara is also uh, uh, believed that uh, all the Buddha's compassion is uh, came together and then came out uh, came out as uh, our Lakshara. Just like Tara is uh, all the Buddha's activities uh, came out as Atara, and and also like all the wisdom uh, came into the Manjushri, and then of course we have all these different deities for all different kinds of things. Uh, like, for example, Zambala and all these deities. So I will let, let the translators do the translation. Okay, and um, um, the, the, how this uh, the, the sadhana uh, came about is that uh, Drodha Kajama came about is that during the 13th and 14th century, uh, there was a uh, Tang Dong Jabu. Uh, he was one a unique, very, uh, how do you say, um, uh, our, we have many great masters, but he was one of the uh, very unique ones. Uh, reason being is because he was not just uh, um, very, um, how do you say, um, great master for the teachings, but he was also in a variety of things, not um, like architect, uh, artist, uh, um, how do you say, uh, as a, as a uh, teacher, teaching, teacher, master. So all he was, a, he was a combination of many things.
uh, I mean, his name, uh, if we just translate directly, his name is Tang Dongba means Tang means uh, great vast land, Dongba means empty and the king king of empty land, something like that. But basically, he used to do a lot of meditation, so that's how he got his uh, his real name was Zundus. Uh, so um, the people because he did a lot of uh, uh, he was very uh, learned. He was very um, how do you say, um, dedicated learner. So that's why they also nicknamed him as the Zundu, uh, Zundu Yab, king of, uh, uh, how do you say, um, very dedication. So uh, he, he was that kind of a person. And also, um, uh, he did many uh, uh, things. For example, he was once he wanted to cross a bridge uh, or cross a river, and uh, the boatman didn't let him into the boat because he was wearing a really dirty cloth. And he actually he was not interested in. Uh, he was really uh, his main interest was learning, education, and practicing. So he didn't care about his clothing, his food, whatever. So he he was only uh, into the uh, teachings. But because of his clothing and looks, uh, the boatman didn't let him go into the boat. At the time, also, uh, um, they were uh, to cross the river, the animals and the pilgrims and the business people, uh, many of them perished because of the water current. Many people used to fall into the river and uh, because they wanted to cross and they couldn't cross and then they passed away, uh, perished in the river. So he decided that uh, he must build a bridge. And you must understand that during 13th and 14th centuries, there's no computer, there's no calculator, there's no uh, this kind of advanced education. So, um, uh, and, and, and uh, you, you can imagine that the, the not, not much books will be also available. So uh, he uh, learned, uh, somehow he, he learned the technique of uh, using, uh, how do you say, uh, dealing with metal. And because he was very, uh, uh, he didn't have any wealth, you know, he was a poor, so he actually found uh, uh, iron, uh, how do you say, um, mining. So he found iron mining and also he, because he needed a bridge, uh, build a bridge, he, at the beginning he begged also, but then he realized begging is not much uh, help. So he founded the opera, uh, singing or uh, Tibetan style opera singing was by, founded by Tang Tong Yabo, so that he used to uh, organize these performance and the uh, um, Tibetan, uh, about seven or 10 Tibetan girls, they, they performed the, uh, the Tibetan opera. And then he used to uh, <clears throat> generate uh, donations through that. And then he built about, uh, I mean, today's time, of course, Tibet and uh, neighboring Bhutan, still you can see these bridges uh, still standing and still working. Uh, so um, uh, he built about 50 or 60 odd uh, bridges uh, in, in his lifetime.
And of course, there's also Tang Dong Jiabo's uh, uh, long life uh, uh, initiation, also which, uh, which, you, which he, of course, practiced. And uh, he lived over, uh, uh, I mean, a uh, few different literatures, uh, uh, say a little bit differently, but basically he lived over a hundred and somewhere around 120 something uh, years. Uh, uh, he, he, he lived over 120 years. So that's a very a big achievement. So he organized a uh, um, um, uh, Oman, the Avalokitesvara mantra chanting, which is very common uh, where we, a group of uh, people gather together to chant uh, Mani mantra for a hundred million times. Uh, it's called Mani Thundru. And during that uh, Mani Thundru, he, uh, in his early in the morning, in the dawn, uh, Avalokitesvara came uh, into his uh, vision uh, and uh, bestowed many teachings to him. Among many other uh, teachings, secret teachings, and this uh, sadhana that we are uh, uh, going to talk about today is one of them. And uh, our Lord also told him that the Mani Mantra uh, will be a uh, very significant, uh, especially in a, uh, how do you say, uh, our Lord is, uh, um, every, every uh, deity has karmic link, right? uh, works, especially our Lord is towards more towards the Himalayan region, at the remote areas, uh, they will be more effective and more powerful. So you, as you can see, that most of the uh, Himalayan, they chant mantra, Omani uh, Bemeho, uh, which is very common all over the Himalayan region. Um, I know uh, uh, I have, uh, when we talk among ourselves, many I heard that uh, saying like money, money is very simple or it's a, it's a very easy or money pay me home. It's very common, too common. That you need something more sacred and more. But if you uh, uh, really listen to your gurus, uh, money actually combines all the, this short six word combines all the Buddha's teaching into this six word mantra. So it's a very powerful and uh, it's a, you don't need anything else actually. Uh, but this ma mantra, he also, uh, Avalokita himself said that the, with man Mani mantra, many people, many, many people will be liberated from the samsara.
Uh, so at the beginning of sadhana, you will have the refuge and uh, um, uh, how do you say? Uh, the refuge is actually a very important part of the uh, sadhana. Uh, I, um, almost all the sadhanas or all the practice you do, you will have a refuge at the beginning. And uh, whom you are taking refuge is the Buddha and Sangha. And why uh, you can also understand why we are taking what we are taking refuge is also a very important part. And this is also a very crucial point because this is will uh, basically, uh, how do you say, um, uh, determine uh, what kind of uh, practice you are doing. Uh, even before you begin, this part is also, uh, because of this part, the, your practice, your uh, kind of blessings you will re receive, the, uh, the amount of merits you will gain it all, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, um, uh, determined by this be beginning part. So you're taking refuge with the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And why we are taking refuge is because of the fear, faith, and compassion. The fear of samsara's uh, suffering, um, uh, faith uh, to the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and uh, uh, compassion towards all the sentient beings who are going through this uh, dif difficult or going through the suffering of samsara. Uh, but we have to also understand that the, in some, I mean, uh, I can see that most of the students here today are senior. Uh, I mean, uh, you have been studying for many years. So I'm sure you know this, that we have six different realms. Uh, we are the human realm. Then we above us, we have the demigods realm and then the gods realm. And the lower, there are three upper and three lower realm in, in the, uh, the sixth realm. And three lower realms are uh, animal realm, demigods realm, and uh, sorry, animal, uh, animal realm, and the hungry ghost realm, and then the hell realm. But if you look uh, uh, you know, carefully, that uh, the the all of these six realms are full of suffering. Although they, some of them, like for example, God's realm, they may uh, appear outward, outwardly they appear to be happy and luxury and happy. But uh, if, if you look closely, they are not. Although the God's room has a lot of luxury, everything is peaceful, beautiful, elegant, luxury from top to bottom, but they have a limit. 
how how long they live. But the, and towards the end of their life, they can, they have the um, uh, how do you say um, they can hear that they are going to pass away, and then they because they are gods, they have powers, so they can see where they are going to be born next next life. And because the entire life they spent in luxury and they spent in doing uh, uh, all kinds of things, uh, so that's why they had, they don't they didn't get, gain many merits. Then because of that, they are going to be born in the lower rooms. So 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 it's a so fear, so much fear they have of, of death. And the demigods realm are, are full of uh, anger, full of, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, anger towards the gods realm because they are always fighting with the gods, but because of their merits, they are always losing. So there, there's a lot of uh, pain and suffering in going through that. Then of course we have the uh, human realm. Now human realm has uh, basically uh, is ge uh, ga na chi means you are born, you are getting older, uh, then you get sick, and then you get you die. This is uh, how do you say? There's nobody is uh, above this. Everybody gets old. Everybody gets sick. Everybody get uh, dies. Everybody uh, how do you say? Uh, get uh, what is it? So this this four is every everyone has to go through this. There's nothing. Uh, uh, there's no um, hiding from this. And uh, now the three lower room, the uh, animal room, there are basically two fears. One is that to be eaten or to be uh, killed by another animal or another uh, human or anybody. And then the second one is that, uh, the, uh, how do you say, uh, people making do things, uh, work, work, making them work in the field or making them do work. So basically that is two suffering. They have to mainly two suffering. And of course, the uh, hungry ghost room is because of the th hunger and thirst, they, they, uh, as you all know. <clears throat> okay. And we have, have the uh, hell room, of course, we have the uh, hot hell and cold. I mean, it's all, all suffering, there's no explanation needed there. Now, this uh, although humans are considered uh, should, should see the, the how lower and higher human realms become in the middle uh, above the the animal realm, uh, lower than the demigods. But for a practitioner, as a practitioner, human realm is considered is the best.
because we have the balance uh, the very good balance that uh, we have we can do practice uh, we can do uh, uh, we have the opportunity to receive teachings and uh, so we have the best opportunity although all the other rooms may have um, they have but very less compared to human so that's why human room is considered the best uh, to be born uh, as a buddhist practitioner Uh, so this is the uh, um, very common teaching of um, um, uh, of course, uh, if you have received, I'm sure you have, mo most of you have received many teachings and almost all the teachers will tell you the same uh, kind of uh, um, teach, give you kind of same kind of teaching. Uh, many of you may be thinking, oh, we, here we go, we are talking again, since it's about the six realms, the three gods, the gods and all, everybody suffering, suffering, suffering. But uh, I believe it is important to uh, listen from time to time because we forget. We f because uh, this, uh, we may think this is for beginners or for something simple, but I believe this is the foundation of Buddhism where you practice. So it is very important. And so, so, uh, without any, if you don't have a good foundation, anything, whether you're building buildings or whether you have doing any kind of work, Without a good foundation, strong foundation, and this is the foundation for Buddhism. So, without a strong foundation, without this kind of um, um, knowing and believing, I always say there's two different things. You know, yeah, I know there's a hell realm. I know there's a God's realm. I already know everything. But believing, do you really believe in that? And that's also a, a, a really uh, big difference I see. So that's why I uh, urge you to really think about, the, although this is simple, uh, easy, but it's very, very, very important uh, uh, subject that we, we, I feel that uh, we are, um, how do you say, neglecting. Now, because of this, uh, you are doing practice because of understanding, because of the understanding of the world, understanding of the realms. Because then, when you uh, looked at all different uh, uh, directions and all the different methods, then uh, when you have, uh, how do you say, uh, if you practice, then there is only one way, uh, which is then whatever you do, all your energy, all your uh, uh, believe is going to into one one path. So then that will be much more powerful and much more stronger uh, than before.
So uh, taking refuge, then you take refuge in fear of samsara uh, and uh, um, believe uh, faith in the Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha, and also the uh, um, compassion for the, all the sentient beings who are suffering in this. Uh, uh, for all, for so, for the sake of all of them, then you are taking this refuge. So this is very important. And for uh, this is the reason now for why, uh, because the, after the understanding, then uh, uh, for the sake of all sentient beings, then, then you are going to do this practice. So this is the beginning part. And also, uh, Um, uh, the, another uh, one of the simple uh, thing you, you must understand is that uh, the, in this in samsara, uh, everything which gathered, for example, we are gathered today here in this Zoom uh, meeting. Uh, the end of this is the uh, is we will go all all uh, in our own way. So we will be uh, dispersed or we will be all doing our own thing. So uh, end of the. Uh, com combining combination is uh, is uh, separation. The gathering of wealth or gathering of, uh, how do you say, uh, whatever you try to uh, preserve and gather together, the end of that is to, uh, whether wealth you have gained, and one day you'll go away. So that's also an important thing. The end of uh, uh, how to say higher the higher the you rank or higher the name the bigger the name you have is the end of that is the uh, going coming down uh, so that's also important. And the end of birth is death is also very important. So after uh, looking at all different uh, the ways of in samsara, then we, so finally we, we say that we will follow the Buddha Dhamma. And so, uh, for example, today we will follow our Lokshitara. So uh, with this mind, for the sake of all sentient beings, but not just for oneself, this is also very important. We are never doing practice for oneself. We are always, always, always doing practice for all sentient beings because we believe in the life after next. We believe uh, I'll, I'll be reborn again and again, 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 because we have been born again so many times that every sentient being in one life or another is what somebody's mother uh, wants your mother, father, friend, husband, wife, children. So they have been close to you one life or another. So uh, we, that's why we are always praying for all sentient beings. This is very important.
the beginning part, preliminary. There are, of course, every teaching has preliminary, main, and conclusion. So now this is the preliminary part. Now the, the main part uh, we have to where we visualize that uh, uh, one self surrounded by all the sending beings together with you, and you have to visualize on top of not just oneself but everyone, or you have to visualize uh, a white lotus, and on top of that is a moon disk. And on top of that is the letter she. And out of the letter C, uh, you have to visualize the our logic that are, uh, appears. White in color, one face, forehand. White, uh, why uh, color white is because it symbolizes the pureness or, or the clearness of the Avalokita um, Buddha. And, uh, and also uh, his Avalokita will look at all Chenrisim, Chenrim, Chen means eyes. So he's looking at all sentient beings through the compassion. So that's all why it's called Chenrisim also in Tibetan word. And now uh, uh, he has four hand. The first two hands are folding uh, on his heart. And uh, also the, it means that uh, Avalokiteshvara is calling out to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to, uh, uh, to give blessing, to guide uh, all sentient beings out of samsara, uh, to, to, to liberation. So this is what he's requesting to all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And the right hand is holding a crystal 108 beads rosary. Clear crystal. So it's also symbolizing that he is there 24 7 looking at all the sentient beings. He's never uh, tired or he's never stopped blessing or uh, liberating people or sentient beings from this samsara. So they, that is it's, 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 that's symbolizing of that. And the left hand is holding a white um, lotus. And also symbolizing the compassion uh, uh, through the lotus. Adorned with many different colorful uh, clothing with all the different, uh, with all the uh, different ornaments. Our Lokshara also has a uh, skin, I think it was a deer skin uh, covering his left uh, breast. This uh, skin uh, uh, symbolizing his compassion towards all sentient beings. Uh, 
uh, on the top of his head is the uh, Amitabha. Because he came out of uh, Amitabha's uh, body. And two legs are in lotus position or, or folded together. Uh, symbolizing the uh, wisdom and emptiness together. And behind his head is the, again, another moon disc. This uh, symbolizing that the coolness of moon is uh, clearing or uh, how do you say, um, uh, taking, uh, clearing all the uh, your negative emotions or the uh, clearing or uh, cooling down all the heat of anger, desire, ignorance. And also the last one is that uh, you are uh, you have to not just visualize this Avalokitara in front of you, which is not just him, but in this Avalokitara, your guru and all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas are all combined together in this one uh, Avalokitara. This is uh, uh, the visualization part. And then of course we have the chanting or uh, then you are basically calling out to the uh, our uh, to, to bestow the blessing and uh, um, that you are doing a prostration to him. This is the second uh, part here. And you have to do the recitation. Uh, um, a few times or as much as you can. And then the next one is uh, taking uh, was doing a sevenfold prayer or uh, seven limb prayer. Uh, this is to now purify oneself before uh, we, uh, how do you say, uh, to do, do this, the mantras, we are trying to purify ourselves. So this is also a very important. Uh, purification process is basically, our uh, basic confession is, uh, first one is the prostration to the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas, all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And then the second one is to offering, offering of flowers, water, food, uh, whatever it is that you want to offer, uh, music uh, you're offering to all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And our third one is confession. You are confessing all your sins, not just uh, you have, which you have accumulated in this life, but all the past lives. Also, you are confessing all your sins. Uh, and then the the fourth one is rejoicing. You are rejoicing to all the. Uh, uh, 
good deeds or all the teachings that you have the, all the buddhas and bodhisattvas you have bestowed you are rejoicing to that uh, this is uh, how it works is that uh, because uh, if you are think oh they did the good deed and if we just rejoice how does it help me because then uh, let's say somebody is uh, giving food to somebody or poor or, 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 or saving somebody's life or any, anything like that. And then you say, ah, I feel that good that he, he, he's, uh, he did that or he or she did that. So I'm very happy for him. Then we, I all rejoice. So by doing that, you are actually, uh, how do you say, um, profiting or you're also generating merits by, to, through somebody else's uh, deed. So this is also very important. And the fifth one is to requesting all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas to turn the wheel of Dharma, to give it teachings, to receive, uh, to uh, give blessings, uh, to you are requesting to that. And the sixth one is requesting all the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas in remain with us to give, give us teaching, uh, to give us, to guide us uh, to liberation. Uh, so without uh, uh, going to, in, uh, without being going to Nirvana, uh, to remain with us, to give teachings to us. And the last one is to to uh, is to uh, dedication pair to all the whatever merits that you accumulate to you uh, you uh, not just uh, keep it oneself but for for the sake of all, all sentient beings. So you are just basically distributing all your merits by doing so. The one minute uh, is not like where you have food and you are giving out to people, but this is uh, uh, all uh, inwardly. So the more uh, people that you dedicate. The, the, uh, that's why we dedicate to all sentient beings. If you do that, your merit will be also multiplied many times. If you just do this for oneself, then you, uh, you're only doing for oneself, your merit is also very small. But if you dedicate this merit to all sentient beings, your merit doesn't go smaller, but it goes more the, uh, bigger. So, so it's, it's also very important. Now, after that, is to uh, again uh, prayers. You are that you are calling out that your guru is the uh, whoever your guru or teacher is. That he is also uh, our Lord Your uh, your deity is our Lord You are you are calling. You are basically you are you are seeing everything as our Lord And you are everything to us. Uh, so uh, please uh, live with us.
Sara and uh, or, or uh, bring us to your or to oneself to your, uh, your close to you. So this is uh, the prayer that you're doing, and the the the, the, the it's a long. Uh, prayer uh, in between you have money mantras basically you are talking about yourself the him different rooms uh, so each room has one sentence so basically the same thing And then the after after this, I think that page ten. Um, after this is where uh, you, know, you have to visualize that the light rays through the power of your request to the through the uh, through the power of the our Lokeshwara and uh, our Lokeshwara light rays issues out from his body. Um, that touches when when the light is touches yourself, it purify all your uh, inner uh, negative emotions. And through the power of this light rays, everything outwardly, everything becomes into paradise or the devachin, uh, where the the, the the paradise of the. Um, uh, Amitabha. And all your, uh, everything um, dissolved into, uh, to, how to say, no, not really dissolved. So everything is now, uh, you are in the paradise. Now, at the beginning, when I say, you know, because forget, we are supposed to, okay, I am, this place is paradise. I am uh, blessed with the uh, Amitabha, uh, my, 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 all my emotions are purified. And that the difference between uh, the great practitioner and uh, the beginner is that the very same thing is that we, uh, our great masters, they can, they believe that. That's how you became great master. At the, uh, our, uh, for myself, we, are, we, are, we have doubt in this very place, maybe in, uh, how is this uh, paradise? So you are, you are questioning yourself. So this is uh, where I say knowing and believing. We know this is something once we are supposed to visualize, but visualizing and believing, the more you believe, the more power you are gaining, the more uh, uh, powerful is your, your chanting and your visualization, your, uh, your, the, the more blessing you are receiving, the more merits you are gaining. So this is the difference. Everything I see is uh, our Lokeshwara, the place where I am uh, uh, the, is the paradise. Every sound I hear is the uh, Mani Mantra. So this is uh, also very important. No. 
that uh, the the your body speech and mind and our Lokshara's body speech and mind turn into one. Uh, so, so after that, now we have to chant the mani, mani mantra. Uh, at the beginning, I said that uh, uh, mani combines all the Buddhas and Buddha, uh, Buddha's teaching. So now I will tell you a reason why. Because uh, mani has six words. Om, mani, padme, hum. Six words. Now, om, meaning of om, uh, om also uh, is a, basically three words. Uh, a, u, ma, om. So, uh, three words also means your body, speech, and mind. This is uh, uh, symbolizing that. Money means jewel, money means also uh, the method. Uh, so uh, uh, money also means that uh, um, one of the, they have many our Lakshara's body and then one of, one of them is holding the jewel. So it, there are many, uh, you can basically is the, the, uh, the one thing you have important to remember is this is the method. Money is also the jewel and also the method. That's what you have to remember. Padme, uh, uh, as I said, that one of the, our Lord is holding a um, jewel, a uh, wish fulfilling jewel, and uh, one hand is also held, holding a uh, uh, lotus. So this symbolizing that, and also another symbolization is Padme is, uh, uh, how to say, wisdom. Uh, the meaning of Padme is also wisdom. So Tabta uh, Sherap, your method and your wisdom. All the Buddha's teaching is all about method and wisdom. So that's why uh, it's, it's, it's considered that Om Mani Pemi Hong holds the, all the Buddha's teaching. Uh, last one is hung, which combines uh, 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 the um, how do you say um, uh, the wisdom and uh, method. So it's like uh, uh, a bird cannot fly with one wing. You need two wings. So just like that, you need uh, wisdom and uh, method to work together to get you out of this samsara to liberate. Another simpler uh, way of explanation is Om Ahom means body, speech, and my body, speech, and mind through the uh, wisdom and uh, uh, method. 
liberate me out of this samsara or bring me to you. So this is a very simple, uh, very easy, uh, but very powerful combines. All, because all the Buddhist teaching is all about wisdom and method. He is trying to use different methods, different uh, to teach you with his uh, uh, great wisdom. So uh, this is uh, basically Om Mani Pemyu who holds the, the all the Buddhist uh, Buddha's teaching. So it's a, it's a very powerful, very easy. But I believe that many people neglect this because it's very easy, because it's very common. Uh, and, but when it comes to teaching, when it comes to practice, there is no such thing as simple or easy or, or, or common. So everything uh, is uh, uh, as powerful as this. The, the power of, we have different met, uh, deities, we have different practices. All of them are different methods. There's no more powerful, less powerful. Oh, my deity has six hands. Oh, my deity has only two hands. Oh, my deity has big, big, uh, tall. Or my this doesn't matter. It's all about uh, how you do your practice. Uh, uh, we have different many uh, deities because we are. We think we are different. Uh, this is this question I get um, asked many many times. For example, many of people. Uh, of uh, all the people come and ask me, do you see uh, the difference between uh, the because Buddha came about 2,500 years ago, somewhere around there, and uh, uh, his teachings are very old, like 2,500 years old, and we are 21st century. We are in such a modern, such a uh, um, uh, how do you say? Um, we think we are very really different. Uh, for example, uh, oh, okay, first let uh, let I will let the translator do the translation. Now we have different cuisines, for example, Italian cuisine, French cuisine, Chinese cuisine, Indian uh, cuisine, or American, British. We have all different kinds of cuisines. We may think they are very different. Oh, the, the, the taste is totally different. The spices are totally different. The way you cook is so different. The smell is different, but everything is so different. And we differentiate through that, oh, because of the smell, because of the different taste, we think it's very different, but we forget the most important part of the food. 
what is the most important part of the food is to give you energy, to fill your stomach, to eat. The taste is secondary. The first point of eating food, because you want to live, you want to survive, you need to eat. That's why uh, that is the most important part. First, number one uh, uh, reason why we eat is because we want to live, because we want to survive. We forget that one. Of course, outer color and taste and smell, these are not as important as to survive. So uh, just like that, uh, Buddha's teachings, uh, we say, oh, we, it's very different, it's very old. And do you think that it will still work in 21st century? But our, my question is, uh, 2,500 years ago, we have, they have headache, they have stomach ache, they have uh, jealousy, they have anger, they have uh, uh, ignorance, which still have the same thing. So why we are so different? Why Buddha's teaching, we, don't, we think that it would not work in today's life? Because this, the problem is the same. Yes, the outwardly we, have, we are wearing different clothing. Our accents have changed. The way we speak has changed a little bit. Uh, but the point is uh, the, our inner, inwardly, we have not changed anything. Whether we are talking about the same, uh, uh, how do you say, uh, same century, different century. Yes, we do things a little bit differently. The, the way our hairstyle may have changed a little bit. Our pants have changed may have a little bit. Uh, 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 things may have changed a little bit here and there, but the main problem, uh, our inwardly, uh, our attachment, our ignorance, our desire, uh, it's the same thing. So uh, it, it, that, with that also, you can also follow the same thing, whether it's Chinese or Americans or the, uh, the French or the Italian or the British or the Russians. They may look different. Well, we are very different. We are, we are so we are, we are colors different. African. We are, we have so many different kinds of color. We may feel that we are very different, but if you go to any country, we have the same problem because of our anger, desire, ignorance. So if the problem is same, why not the method will be? Why Buddha's teaching will not work? Because Buddha is not talking about outwardly things. Mainly he's talking about inward, inner peace, inner, because once you have, you have control over oneself, it's all, Buddha's teaching is all about uh, oneself and one's more controlling our mind. Because everything you see, uh, 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 you feel is through how you feel and how you see through inwardly. Your mind is telling you it's good. Your mind is telling you it's bad. Your mind is, so basically your mind is making you do whatever you do in your life. So if you have control over your mind, you have control over all the world or entire, uh, you are, you are, if you, if you are, no matter what kind of situation, no matter what kind of a difficult, uh, 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 worldly, uh, difficult time you are going through, but if you have control over your mind, then there is no, uh, uh, there's no bigger uh, problem than everything is almost, because that's why I always feel that our great masters, our the, the, the great, you never see them in a rush. You never see them doing fast and doing things in a, a harsh uh, or, or doing, uh, because they are always, their mind is always controlled. Their all, mind is always going in the same speed, same pace. Uh, and they are not worried about a small here, which we are doing for simple things, the small things, we get angry, we get uh, uh, emotional, we get, we, we do, and we, we, because of these, things let, uh, we let ourselves affected. That's why we do actions uh, according to that. So once you control your mind and Buddha's teaching is all about how you simple, you, he may talk about outwardly different things, the mountain, the, the give you many, these are all methods. These are all methods. What he's trying to teach you is basically inwardly. Finally, it comes to oneself. And then finally it comes to the attachment. And finally, it comes to uh, one's attachment one to, toward one's everything. Once you control yourself, then you have the power. You have you are basically liberated. This is, this is, this is, if you put it in a simple uh, uh, word, uh, liberation or the uh, Buddhahood in a very uh, worldly way. If I say that once you control your mind, and not just for one second or a few seconds, but uh, if you can keep it in that way, then that is uh, liberating yourself. Liberation does not mean that you are going into a different planet or different uh, next life or uh, this thing. So it's all all about uh, once uh, um, once you see the true meaning of life. Once you see the uh, that's where I always say we know all this. All the students we have today here, 
thousands of here, they, we all know uh, why we are here, because of our anger, desire, ignorance. There is no question about that. Anybody who have received teachings, they will know this is the reason why we are in the samsara. But because of how much we believe in ourselves and our practices is affected by that. Oh, we are, I'm just a simple person. I am just a normal person. My sadhana is just, I am doing it my home, simple home. It doesn't matter whether it's your big home or small home. The, the point is that because uh, the, the, that's, I think I believe where it's coming from is because we know ourselves. I know myself. I cannot tell you how you feel because I, I cannot see your mind, but I see myself. I, I can, I can uh, feel my own mind. And I know how ignorant I am. How I know how emotional, I, 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 what kind of desire, anger, de or ignorance, all is going through him. I know, I can feel it. So that's why you feel, oh, I'm not a, such a great person. I'm not a good person. I'm a very simple, minor person. And I've been speaking this to many of our students uh, and as much as I can. I tell this again and again, that there is no such thing as simple or there is no such thing as normal practitioner. As you are doing your practice, you are already on the right path. You are already trying. You are trying, already trying. That, also, that is a very, very big step, what you are trying. So whenever you do your practice, whenever you think of, uh, 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 of uh, doing meditation or doing meditation, so you have to believe 100% that your practice will help all sentient beings. And this is the one step, because you cannot stay, take a thousand steps at the beginning. You have to start from one step. One step becomes two, two step, three step. Then you will accumulate till you reach the thousand. You cannot just, for, first step is thousand step, cannot be like that. So your first step is the right path, right, uh, right uh, 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 step. So it is very important you believe in oneself because we must, we must, uh, uh, Buddhas and all these our masters who came to uh, into, into, into samsara to teach, they did not teach everywhere and everything. They checked they, because they checked and, and felt and saw that these people are worthy of our teachings or, of, of, or worthy of teaching. If you are not worthy, you will be not be receiving this teaching. So you have to also understand that for example, today's uh, this uh, teaching, um, uh, how do you say, Trujin um, Tong Jabo, he believed in one, uh, uh, us. He believed in all of us. He put his, his trust and the, the teachings that he have received through our Lokishdrava, directly from him, he decided to share it with us. Uh, that's, I believe that is such a, uh, 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 such a how do you say uh, 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 the honor and such a the the the, the respect and such a um, uh, um, belief that he have shown to us. Now we have to show, uh, if not all, a little bit of belief in ourselves, right? You have to believe because your guru believed in you. The our Thangdong Jabo believed in you. Our Lokesh Tarwa himself believed in you. He knew, um, of course, I'm sure, and I mean, I know that our Lokesh Tarwa believed in Tandon Jabo and knowing that he will give to other people, uh, all these, his students and all the followers in the future, he, they knew, they are Buddha, they know all the, all the past, future and present, they, all, they know everything. So they knew that you are going to practice. So if, the, if our Lokesh Tarwa didn't believe that in the future, these students are not worthy of uh, my teaching. He will not pass it on to Thandon uh, Jabo. This is also very important, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, how do you say? Uh, because we, we cannot uh, talk of our Buddhas like normal person, right? Like, oh, if, if I don't tell him, he doesn't know. If I don't, if I do this in corner, or if I do a little bit drinking sometimes, if I do a little bit naughty things here and there, or he, he doesn't know, you cannot, uh, that's you. You are just lying to yourself. If I uh, you know, so, they, 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 it doesn't work that way. You have to uh, believe hundred percent that your guru is the Buddha himself, and he know everything. 
and Buddha, our Lord Mishra, they are always there watching over us because it's just that our karma that we cannot see them because it's our karma. We, we have to merit more, gain, gain more merits to see them, to receive them, seeing directly to them. But for that, we have to practice and we have, is it, if we can't see them, that doesn't mean that they can't see you. They are not with us. They are always, in the, all 10 directions, they are always there. Uh, um, and all the different, uh, they are, outwardly they are different, but inwardly they are all the same. Uh, I mean, just a few days ago, I was doing uh, Guru Pama uh, um, uh, practice or the teaching, and, and there, when I was reading that, that, it says that he is always there. He, is all, he said he is always outside the door. It's just that when you open the door, he, he's there. He's always there. As soon as you open the door, he's he'll be coming. He he's so he he's always waiting. So he, we we are not waiting for him. He's waiting for us. So once we believe in ourselves, believe in our teachings, then everything will be changed. Everything will be much more powerful. Then uh, whatever merit, if you're gaining gaining, let's say five merits today, if you with this belief, you, you are multiplying by five hundred. So it is very important. Uh, to believe that uh, these uh, our masters, our uh, um, the the uh, our, our gurus and their gurus and their gurus, and if it goes back till the, for the, for example this teaching till Thondon Jabo and Thondon Jabo received directly from our Lokishita. So this chain which goes on till the our Lokishita himself. So they all believed in one another and they pass it down to uh, different students. So. Um, um, I believe that it is, it is very important that uh, uh, we, we disbelieve that we have to do these mantras. And after the mantra, we have to, uh, without any, uh, how do you say, um, attachment, or I, I have received this teaching, now my body and my mind and my speech are as powerful or as same as the Avalokshara. So without any, uh, how do you say, hiding, uh, um, uh, um, attachment, without any, um, uh, uh, co with control of your mind, without any ego, without any attachment, we have to keep our mind in a very calm uh, way. And uh, if some emotions or some uh, uh, thoughts arise, you have to notice that ah, oh, this is this is a thought, and uh, this is I, I I felt that or I knew that. Then it will go down, it will come down, and you uh, basically with that we have to meditate on the even on, uh, on uh, emptiness. Sorry, I I think I will let this translate into the translation. <laughs> Maybe too long. <laughs>
Uh, okay, uh, now this is uh, up to here is the main part of the sadhana. Now the conclusion, uh, conclusion part is uh, basically uh, you are calling out to the Buddha, uh, our Lokshitra, and uh, you are requesting the, that uh, all the sentient beings to uh, that bring us to uh, to you or to liberate us. This is the dedication prayer, uh, which is also a very important method, as I said, uh, to multiply your merits. You are dedicating all the merits, whatever you have gained through your practice. And during this practice, you are dedicating to everybody. And this is the completing the, uh, this completes the sadhana. Uh, now also I was, I was talked, uh, asked to talk about the pandemic. Uh, for uh, I don't think uh, uh, there's um, as a Buddhist practitioner there's not much special going on here uh, because death and sickness and getting old and dying is always there even before the pandemic even during pandemic and after the pandemic also it'll be same it's just that our karma uh, depending on our karma we uh, will survive this uh, and uh, it's all about karma. It, you are alive because of three days karma uh, your uh, merits and your uh, your your, uh, your merits yes your life your karma your merits these three things are keeping you alive if one of them or two of them are uh, on the low then you can do life releasing you can do practices amitabha practice uh, you can do all kinds of to re, re to how do you say uh, to get more of them. But if all three exhaust, there is nothing. No Buddha, no uh, no nobody can do anything to keep you alive. And there are two kinds of karma. We are individual karma and the combined society's karma. Uh, of course, this is uh, uh, karma, uh, you can you can say at the uh, combined all the people's com uh, combined together our karma that we have to go through this such a such a uh, pandemic. And it's just that we have to accept uh, Buddha uh, as a Buddhist teaching, as a Buddhist student, as a Buddhist follower. Uh, we we believe in the truth. We believe in the reality. We believe in the the, the the way of life so uh, we just have to accept that uh, accept accept that and then we we would be uh, we have to go through that
uh, long ago in, in uh, Sakya, there was a great master. He did, uh, he, uh, did not just follow Sakya, he also followed other few uh, other masters. Um, he was, his name was called Mochutome. He was a great master and one student, uh, one uh, master or other uh, masters asked him uh, what to do uh, if, I, if, I get, if I get sick, if I, if I am not sick, if I am, um, how do you say, uh, wealthy, if I am not wealthy, if I am dying or death, or if I survive. So what do I, what do I as a practitioner, what should I do? That, but that was the, these are the questions they asked. And uh, Uchi Tome said that uh, if you are sick, or if you are if you are sick, then how you should uh, uh, um, go through that is that uh, you are sick because of one's karma. Uh, uh, I am sick because my karma has uh, 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 because of my previous uh, things that I did. Because of that, I am going through this suf this suffering. And uh, now you have to uh, think that oh. Uh, Actually, it's a in a in a one way of thinking. This is a good thing because when you are sick, that means you are now bad karma is uh, dissolving. Because uh, the more you suffer during this life, that means your bad karmas are going out. You are finishing. So your next life, you have less bad karma. So it's, <laughs> so it's a one way. It's a good thing that you are all your uh, the suffering that you are going through. The make. Uh, uh, you, you should rejoice that all oh, my suffering or the, whatever disease you're going through, whatever sickness, your pain you're going through, you, know, you have rejoiced. Oh, I, I'm sick. Oh, now my karma is all the bad karmas are going out of my system. So this is also you have to rejoice. If you are not sick, of course, this is a very good thing. Then you can do practice. You can receive teachings. You can do all kinds of good deeds. You can you are able to one well, person who is not well who cannot uh, do uh, who is sick. You cannot do anything. But when you are not uh, sick, then you can do all these uh, uh, good deeds. That you have the chance for you to, uh, how to say, do these uh, practices and uh, accumulate these good deeds. Now, uh, if you are wealthy, he said, this is a very good thing. Now you, you can uh, uh, donate, you can donate to the poor, you can do a lot of good things. You can to accumulate more merit. This is a very good thing. But if you don't have any wealth, if you are a poor person, again, you should be rejoicing because because of wealth, the amount of ego, the amount of problems you will face, is not there anymore. You, 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 know, you don't have to worry about all the houses you have, all these big cars, how, how many cars you have, you have, you, you know, the, all these uh, emotions you have to go through because the, all of this wealth, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, and then you can uh, do, do your practice. 
if you have wealth, of course, again, it's, you can do uh, life release, feed the poor, offering to the uh, deities. You can do a lot of good things. So both ways, this is a good thing. So this is, uh, again, what he said. And uh, if you are facing death, is of course again the same as before. With uh, uh, death, is the karma that you are or you can uh, uh, that uh, you have to go through, and your bad karma is going down. That means you are facing death. This is a good thing because you die, your bad karma amount of the, the karma is going with you. So that's also a good thing. If you are not dead, if you are alive, again. It's a very good thing that you can do practice. You can do all kinds of things. When you are alive, you can do things. When you are not alive, you can't do it. But at the same time, with the death, the, 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 the amount of bad deeds that you have done, it's also uh, 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 how say, coming to an end. So it also uh, that, that uh, way you should uh, rejoice your life. That's the way you should uh, uh, live as a practitioner. That was the advice or that was the reply that he got. And finally, uh, I would like to say one thing that uh, that uh, the the great master Shanti Deva uh, said, Shivatsu uh, Kinji Shivatsu. He said, "If there is a, a, a solution, why worry? Because we have a solution. If there is no solution, why worry? Because there is nothing you can do. So both ways, there is no not to worry. You you are you are in a good hands. You are you are a practitioner. You have great master. You are you you are able to do this. So." Uh, I think I have bored enough for one day. I bored you, <laughs> bored you for enough for one day. So I will leave you with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rinpoche. Uh, I would just like to bring to your attention some students in the chat have requested the reading transmission of the sadhana. Uh, so I will do the uh, oral transmission of the sadhana. So she impeaches you, Jimmy Dodar, or Rajin, you did, but the Sanjay Shinto Midi boy and Rogan Namda Shinto Chubar Show, or Namgadan, you put some gentle jigget on Totalana Majeva, and the ones of the Sanjay Jacobar and Bujajin, and Tom Yavata, teach it on the loans and Muslim Latin, Sushin Donyam Dolan, you and Yambasamba Chanjuki, Chodo, Yavasa, and Sampana Show. 
de tu ce ce mbogom de dundru rodin khadia mo shu so ce de ce mbogom de ne tombo sa ja tombo ja psem sa je chu tan so ge cho nom la chan ju po do da ne ke su che da ge jin so ge be so nom ge en ro la pen ji sa je ro ko Asta este un adevăr, 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 este și se romola soba, nu joi, e june, bo, pobe, tot e șezut, tot e toma, mine, tot e para, mige, ce sunt sa mea, se ne întâmplă, suntem deși aparte, ne întâmplăm, ne Tom Jay, Janjo Jujun, Rimbo Motorua, Jemepoto, Dajuru, Jona Gelon, Pema, Caputo, Cheresi, Sodebni, Soade, Solama, Cheresi, Soade, Soyedam, Cheresi, Soade, Sopajo, Cheresi, Soade, 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 să vă duceți la Wangi, ne-a văzut că e o dată, nu 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 ne Dumnezeu, <laughs> Nam da ridon e mei juro, ce tu-i gom si do ma ne pe mei hon, ce ro de tau koro son mi to pe rangor. Nyam bara isa, da si lui na pa pe go, ta pa da yi tu pe yan, ta pe ma, ta to yi se chen pe long. Ghe wa di nyu do da si re sa wang tru ju nin ro a ji nyam ma li pa ti yi sa lang go bara isa, tu ju chen pe gom de ro de ka jya ma ji di tu jen tang tong jya pe son chen ji ra jen no sa wa mang ga lam. Să vă mulțumim pentru vizionare, 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 să vă mulțumim Long life prayers will now be offered by John Myung Losal and Sylvia Yu. Glorious Ruguru, precious one, seated upon a lotus on the crown of my head, look after me with your great kindness and bestow accomplishments of body, speech, and mind, I pray. For this realm encircled by snow-covered mountains, you are the source of every benefit and bliss without exception. Tenzin Gatso, you are one, you are one with Avakadeshvara. May you remain steadfast until samsara's end.
Ingi mortos lie put at to will, seven I one grant in deathlessness, great assemblage grant in deathlessness, grant attainment of immortal life, Padivano Parmasambhava, wisdom, love, and powers, radiant form, Sakya spoons of insights and the words, master of the four worlds, please to live long. Na wan kung ga lan, da kung di wan, given joy and benefit to all, owner of the great and sacred path, wish fulfilling great king, bliss love long. Meditating, thinking, listening, place upon the moral golden base, teach the bacon post the Dharma's words, royal sublime refuge, firm remain. Second Buddha teacher Volamdre, valid path the Buddha taught through speech, teachings of the Sakya founders by you who teach like Buddha firm remain. Having come, you beautify this world, holding Sakya's power, temper road, radiating Sakya's Dharma works, Vajra life, three secrets long remain. Triple gem and teacher, kind and true, Edong and protectors for the mind, profound and unchanging, sublime true. By these powers, our hopes will be fulfilled. O oh, the limitless majesty of perfect life, Amitayu, goddess who grants perfect longevity in Vijaya, perfect deities, Siddhas, and Vidyadharas grand sublime accomplishments, perpetual and perfect. Powerful voice, sovereign master of the Bhumi, endowed with the 10 powers. Lord of all learned ones, whose intelligence brings complete joy to them all. Great guide to samsara and nirvana, best of all guides, or most among guides. Powerful conqueror, mightiest of conquerors, please live long. The precious treasures of the body, speech and mind of the Buddhas of all directions and times are gathered in you. Fearless one, whose water sharp lucidity shines forth, that the radiance of your enlightened activity may permeate the world's three realms. Son of the gentle protector's teachings, please live along. Your miraculous wisdom is unimpeded in all reaches of knowledge, and visibly to the fortunate, even if not to those less endowed. You, Lord, are inseparable from exalted Manjushri, line of speech, please live along. Immaculate in the three trainings, you have perfected knowledge in all its aspects protector and refuge of beings, endowed with the cooling rays of compassion, reservoir of the powerful nectar of many noble intentions, mighty Lord of Buddha Dharma on the crown of our heads, please live long. Atop the golden climbing vine of the gentle protector Siddha family, ruler of the kingdom of the four Kayas through the pathways of the four motions, you are the jeweled flower, Lord of the wheel, embodiment of all the ocean-like tantras, please live long. Golden Chakravartan of both secular and dharmic activity, may you who reigns with the seven jewels be constantly supported by the masters and Vajra guardians, making auspiciousness and virtue continuously blaze. From the treasury of attainment, grant the blessing of a long life deities, ocean of the gurus and siddhas, please you grant him immortality. 
Kunga, nature of the triple gem. You have Kensei, threefold qualities, emanation of pure Kun lineage, head of Vajra holder, please of long, master of the conventional truth, Siddha of the seeing ultimate truth, you who have the compassion to guide, hard of Buddhist teaching, please of long, such and like sees non duality, Sakya Punchin like and omniscient, Jugyal Pakba like a great power, the holder, the holy successor, please of long. By the power of the pure intent, by the truthness of the triple gems, by the gracious of the sublime words, live long and flourish activities. Vast treasure of heroic Manjushri's courage, abundantly piled together in one place by the beautiful Saravasti, the son of the teachings of Mahayana, the collective wealth of the Dharma, you dispel the darkness of the world, say with us, we pray. In the midst of lotus flowers of pure love, with their anthers of kindness, and tender leaves of objectless compassion. Your sublime smile radiates with a thousand petals of wisdom and realization, manifold and profound. Crown jewel of countless guides, stay with us, we pray. All that appears is nothing but imagined. Owing to its dependent nature, it shines forth as the play of the mandal of the three seats. Its true nature, the perfected, is an enlightened awareness of great bliss. Upholder of the secret doctrine, you show the purport of three characteristics. Stay with us, we pray. You are a sublime jewel tree of the threefold discipline, nursed by the fertile ground of the two accumulations. May your holy body laden with fruits of the two benefits accomplish the seven qualities of the indestructible Vajra. May the cool Himalayan winds of this one pointed supplication stir the blue cloud banks of your caring compassion to shower rain of nectar of the two accomplishments, bestowing the supreme maturation of the excellent fruit of the four Kayas. Through the blessings of an ocean of divinities of longevity and mortality, coming from the celestial race of luminosity, you grant the glory of great bliss. Wealthy with the vast activity of tantric vidyadharas, chief among the kinis, we supplicate you to live long. Protectoress of the dharma and of beings, you arose from, from the lineage in the teachings of revered Sakya, which is the radiant sun of the enlightened one's religion. Turn fully the wheel for attaining deathlessness and ever increase your twofold work for the Dharma and for beings. Traversing the path of deathless freedom, ripen your mind, inquire the fortune of liberation, that you gaze directly upon the face of reality and dwell always in joy that does not fail. Auspicious source of all good qualities, auspicious great being, Manjugosha, auspicious emanations from immortal clear light gods, auspicious divine lineage, pray long and endure. Luminous great light, blessing of the victor, illuminating the three worlds by the appearance of your power. Luminescence, victorious over the darkness of ignorance, radiant Kun lineage, pray long and endure. Region of the sage in the north of the earth, thus widely praised by all the scholars and siddhas of the earth. The Saki lineage is master of the doctrine on the earth, pray long and endure as the protector of disciples on the earth. From among the many upholders of the doctrine, beautiful ornaments of the sage, there were many saints, such as the six ornaments and the two excellent ones. The Kun lineage is the ornament of the doctrine and living beings in the degenerate age. You praise as an ornament by the victor, pray long and endure. May the Sakya lineage, which appears as a succession of scholars and siddhas, having appeared continuously and rapidly, appearing for beings as an ocean of riches of samsara and nirvana, appear here now as the wish fulfilling gem of supreme liberation. By the blessings of the Triple Gem, by the power of the virtuous ones, the Mahoders, Lana Manju Shri, live long, may your deeds like the Buddha's grow, praying for our teachers perfect health, Praying for our teachers' ageless lives, praying that their works will grow and spread, not to part from them, all oh, bless me, please. May they have firm lies, mountain life. May they hold the teaching stellar life. May their fame and glories thrust through space. Through their good words gain we happiness.
May the glorious lamas remain prolonged and the myriads of beings know happiness and joy. May I and all others gather merit and purify defilement and quickly reach Buddhahood. May the lamas, the lights of the Dharma remain prolonged. May practitioners of the Dharma pervade the world. May benefactors of the Dharma be prosperous and wealthy. May the Dharma itself flourish for long. With this virtue, may I attain the state of omniscience and thereby defeat the foes of downfalls. May I liberate beings from the ocean of existence where the waves of birth, old age, disease, and death roll violently. In whatever way of I am Manjushri and Samadabhaja know how to transfer merit, so do I dedicate all my own virtues that I might train to be like them. In order that all might share good fortune, I turn over all, turn over all these roots of virtue through whatever means of sharing merit that the Buddhas of the three times praise. By whatever merits I have gained by hearing and teaching this holy Mahana Dharma, may all beings be worthy of the pure and precious Dharma. Through this power, may the hordes of evils, the doctrines of heterodoxies, the various kinds of sham and seeming dharmas, and all the harm inflicted upon beings be destroyed from the root. Throughout all lives in samsara, may all be possessed of inexhaustible merit and wisdom, and thereby become the inexhaustible treasury of all the virtues of means, of wisdom, samadhis, and powers. May the socket teachings which illuminate the doctrine, and our excellent protector guarding the northern regions, increase in this land of glacial peaks, which is filled with an ocean of learned and realized masters. May the spiritual and secular influence of splendid Sakya, the Vajra seat in the center of glacial Tibet increase. May the, hered may the hereditary lineage of emanations continue without break, and may all its activities equal the expanse of space. Teacher of beings, Pandita, Dharma King, Lord of knowledge, Arya Manjushri, may all be auspicious with the teaching of the second Buddha, the glorious Sakyapa, remain for a long time to come. Vajradhara, embodiment of the three secrets, of all the infinite Buddhas of the Ten Directions, heralded by the Buddha, Kungazampo, may all be auspicious with his teaching, remaining for a long time to come. Can I, uh, can I, I have... request if you could do the uh, Jizunku Shou's long life prayer, if you have? Oh, Rinpoche, we had done it in English. Oh, okay. On behalf of Sake Katrucholin Retreat Center, I express our deepest gratitude to Rinpoche for this beautiful Dharma program, to Jamyang and Sylvia for the offering of long life prayers, to the Vajrayana Sake Manjushri Center in Taiwan for broadcasting this program, to Chinese speaking students, and to all the participants. Rinpoche, we offer our prayers for your long life and to continuously turn the wheel of Dharma. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>